Hello everybody, this is Simon with Let's Play Mega Man Quintum. Only one star droid remaining of the uh, starting four, and of course there's going to be eight, and it is Mercury, and much like the metal named after his planet, he can actually turn liquid, which is a very nice touch, much like with the other star droids, actually. Um, sons for those where I don't get the reference. to. <laughs> so, these conveyor belts here are a main feature in the level and they're actually pretty damn annoying because their switching is timed, so um, they will always switch at some moment or another, which can kind of trip you up, though I really really love their interaction with the falling blobs from the ceiling. It is very very nice. You also have a good weapon to deal with it because the photon missile stays in the air for a while and you can shoot two of them at once. Like here. It's very very cool against enemies like this because, well, two uh, special weapon hits are better than one, of course. And you can leave traps behind like this and you can use it as a makeshift shield against stuff on above. Uh, it will not shield you against um, surprise spikes, of course, but they are that's a given. As I said, the problem with the LA and Jesus, conveyors is mostly when they tend to switch at the last possible second where you want to jump and then you just plummet into the spikes, it's not too fun. This guy here is rather strange because he's only in this room as far as I know, unless I'm forgetting uh, one in the fortress stages again, but um, fortunately enough he's dealt with very easily because otherwise he can be pretty annoying. It's a nice design though, I like it. Respawn point. Final one on the level actually, that's going to be kind of annoying. So we've already seen what these guys do. And uh, this one here is placed so that you go down and walk into a trap if you're not quick enough and I want to be really cool and drop the cat on him. But, uh, well, now Tango is just going to be a little stupid about things. It is really not that hard of a guy to deal with, though I do appreciate that both uh, he and the first uh, one you encounter are actually placed in the way so that you can easily check out their movement patterns. Though the biggest surprise is actually when you kill them and know you cannot take out the wheel quickly. It is just the way it is. These guys here are also rather like and uh, they interact very very well with the moving floor segment here which is absolutely not a pain in the ass surprisingly enough. What we're going to test out now is the clobber function of the Mega Buster, actually, I don't know how it's called, I'm sorry, um, which latches onto enemies. Sadly enough, it doesn't work half the time. Um, it says that uh, you have to either hold the button after firing it or press it again on um, some wikis, but it's a little inconsistent in any case and I'm still not 100% sure. But still, uh, if you manage to pull it off then it can take out high health enemies really easily because it just does not let go of them. Um, we're going to see it in a second, not on this guy. Some of them are immune, this guy should not be, but as said it is incredibly inconsistent. Um, yeah, this was an example of the random switching of the conveyor but fucking me over. Not nice. Um, but it is nice to have, I'd say. It also works on bosses actually, though we're not going to see it in Mercury because there's an uh, inconsistency. But this is what happens when it does happen and is very, very nice. Um, I do not regret having bought it, it's just, yeah. Uh, if it were working perfectly, then I could understand the enemies having such high health. It, this is one of the biggest reasons for why I think the health total of enemies is in general so incredibly high in this game as compared to other games. As it does not work all the time, it kind of makes the game sometimes a little tedious. Like here, this guy was just in the way. Holy shit! You know, I really should know this by now, that there are spikes here, but I am inconsistent at stuff. You know that by now. Now I'm going to show you a little special feature. The entire level again to prove that I can indeed do it without dying. Of course it is not the reason for leaving the death in. I'd like you to notice how I perform pretty much the same actions again, because I have of course practiced this level and tactics for it with a few variations which I always tend to think up on the spot. Also, clobbering works even less than before. The point I want to make with this is as follows. Quintum is very much a puzzle game as much as it is a platformer. It has a slow deliberation to its situations which provide you with a time limit to solve, but a rather general one, many tools depending on the level order. As such, a huge part of the enjoyment actually comes from figuring out these puzzles. Conversely, playing the level again after having practiced and understood it is actually not very fun. And it is a feeling I don't only have and recording always feel a little daunted when picking a Quintum again, because getting a game over at the end of these long ass and honestly kind of tedious levels always feels like such a blow. Replaying shit because you died on a single mistake always sucks, but it especially sucks in a slow game like this. 
It actively detracts from the overall quality of the game for me, and that makes me sad because Quintum is really fucking good otherwise and it doesn't deserve to be settled with the extra life limited instant death spikes. Now a comprehensive dissertation about why I hate extra lives in general would be going a little too far for this already long rant, I just felt this instance of shit happening was a nice illustrative example of my case, sincerely hope it didn't bore you. And yes, it was right at the end, and you could see that I would still have had to replay a lot of stuff, even if I um, hadn't... Uh, yeah, even if I didn't want to restart it, because let's play reasons, of course. So, Mercury is a really easy boss, and a huge argument for why you might want to actually take him on first, if you can deal with all of the surprise spikes in his level, of course. This is his main attack and the one we're going to get, and it steals items from you. Yes, this e can is gone for good, which can be incredibly annoying if you're like shelling out money for super tanks because yes, he can randomly steal those, but the problem he has with it is that you shoot him once and then um, his attack is immediately interrupted. Very nice. Other than that, you have seen all he does. This attack is really easy to avoid, even for me who has always trouble with bouncing stuff. And the other one comes out rather quickly, but uh, it is still dealt with rather easily by just jumping over them. And well, that's it. That's the entire boss. You can interrupt his main attack, and the other attacks are just moving left and right. He's like a devil in that, that means he's incredibly boring. Fortunately enough, he doesn't have too much health, because Game Boy Screen, very very nice of him to die quickly. Now the weapon we get from him is actually one I won't be using too much because it doesn't really fit my playstyle of trying out different shit. It is actually pretty damn boring because it just shoots forward, it does deal a little more damage than you're used to but it takes up quite a lot of weapon energy. We are going to see what it does though after this fucking awesome screen here, um, animation I mean, which we've already seen uh, quite a few times but I will never fail to mention how awesome it is, or maybe I have so far, if so I apologize. So yeah, the grab buster steals little health pellets from enemies and gives you back to them, which is both rather funny because they're homing out uh, it tends to be a little borked, and also incredibly useful if you're struggling getting hit left and right. Really nice. So, time to take on the leader next time for now. Thank you very much for your attention.